In the second example here, we're asked to sketch this uh, rational function. And let's take a look at intercepts first again. So if I put 0 in place of x, I get 2 over, now 0 plus 4 is just 4, and 4 squared is 16. So I have 2 over 16, which reduces to 1 8th. So f of 0 is 1 8th. That is the uh, y-intercept. I put 0 in place of x to find the y-intercept. Now there is no x-intercept, that's why I didn't bother to do this, because if I try to set this function equal to 0, like this, there is no solution. Uh, the x is only in the denominator, and you can't get that to be equal to 0 if the uh, 0 comes from the denominator. Okay, So it's not possible for uh, the function to equal 0 and hence have an x-intercept. So there are no x-intercepts at all. Now, the vertical asymptotes, let's take a look at asymptotes. We didn't need to worry about that with the polynomial function on the first example, but this one's rational, so there is a vertical asymptote. The vertical asymptote is a place where the function is undefined. <coughs> and so, uh, negative 4 is what makes the denominator equal to 0. And so, since negative 4 makes the denominator equal to 0, it, it's a value that uh, is a restriction on the domain. Uh, x cannot equal negative 4. So that's a place where the function is undefined. The uh, actually only value in the set of real numbers that the function is not defined for. So the vertical asymptote is x equals negative 4. Now we'll investigate what happens to the immediate left and right of negative 4. And we'll take a look at the left and right hand limits. So x approaching negative 4. And remember this minus here means from the left. And this plus means from the right. And the only place there's x's in each of these expressions is in the denominator. The, the top number is still 2 in the numerator. And so if you approach negative 4, then from the left side, then this actually approaches, well, x is getting really close to, uh, the whole thing is getting really close to 0 because x is approaching negative 4. So this whole value inside here gets, uh, gets close to 0. And the, the sign of what's in the brackets doesn't really matter because it gets squared. This part is getting close to 0. Now, in the top one, if you're approaching negative 4, and let me get a color here that's probably a little better on this. There, it's just yellow. If you're approaching negative 4 from the left side, so for example, we're putting a number in place of x a little bit to the left of negative 4. For example, let's say negative 4.001. If I put that in place of x here, then what's in the brackets here is actually going to end up being negative 0 0.001 that you're squaring in the denominator. So it's a very tiny number that you're squaring, so it gets even smaller when you square it, but when you square it, it still ends up being positive. And the, the, um, something very similar happens here. If you're approaching negative 4 from the right side, so for example, we're putting a number like this in place of x, a little bit to the right of negative 4, a little bit bigger than negative 4, and this will actually end up being then 0 0.001. But when you square it, you end up with the same thing you get up, up here in this one. So both of them, in both cases, it's 2 divided by a very small positive value. And so that's why both of them approach positive infinity. Because you're dividing positive 2 by a very small positive number. And so both of them tend towards positive infinity. So it's going up towards getting, getting very, very large function values on both sides of the vertical asymptote. And we'll graph that in, on the next page. Now there is a horizontal asymptote. If the power of x is larger in the denominator, then as x becomes really big, and that's what happens, that's what, what the behavior of the function as x becomes large, then the denominator, as x becomes big, like a number like 100 or 1,000 or a million, the denominator becomes really big. The top number is still just 2. It's 2 divided by a really big number, and that gets really close to 0. So that's why <coughs> y equals 0 is a horizontal asymptote with this function. As x becomes really large, the function values approach 0. And so y equals 0 is a horizontal line that the function gets really, really close to. Now to check whether it's getting really close to from above or below, we fill in a large number in place of x, for example, 100. I could use 1,000 if I wanted to. So I'm putting uh, 100 in place of x. So what we have in the denominator here is 104 squared. And if you divide 2 by 104 squared, the denominator is a really big number. But you end up with a positive value. 
So this works out to 0.00018 if you actually do the math. And this is actually negative 96, but when you square it, it still ends up being a positive value, a large positive value. Not identical to this one, but it's still uh, close to zero, but positive. And so that means that in both cases, to the far right and the far left, the horizontal asymptote is approached from above. And we'll graph that on the next page. Now, let's find the uh, first derivative here. I'm going to rewrite this. Instead of using the quotient rule, I'm going to rewrite this and bring the x plus 4 squared up with the 2. So that's why the exponent changed to a negative 2. And then we'll differentiate. So the negative 2 comes down and multiplies by the positive 2 to give negative 4. x plus 4 to the power of negative 3. Uh, there actually is chain rule here, but the denominator, sorry, the um, derivative of what's in the brackets here, the derivative of x plus 4 would just be a 1, so that's why we don't bother write that. It doesn't change the value of the derivative. So there actually is chain rule there, but we won't worry about writing that like that. So we can write, rewrite this derivative as negative 4 over x plus 4 cubed, and so that's our derivative. So remember, we'll plot this point first on the next page. f is 0 is 1 8. We got a vertical asymptote at negative 4 and a horizontal asymptote at 0. Up, up on both sides and uh, approaching from above to the far right and left. So first of all, here's our um, y-intercept at 1 8, 0, 1 8. And so here's the derivative from the previous page. Now, we cannot equate that to 0 and solve and find a value for x because there's no x in the numerator. The x is only in the denominator. Um, if you tried to um, like cross multiply here, if you tried to solve this, 0 is the same as, of course, 0 over 1. So we would multiply this by 0. And so that would just give you 0 equals and the product of, it would equal the product of 1 and negative 4, which is negative 4. And of course, a 0 doesn't equal negative 4 if you, so if you cross multiply and try to solve for x, you do not get any kind of a solution at all. And that's because of the fact that there, there's no x up here at all. It's just a constant negative 4. If the x is in the denominator, then there's no way, there's no solutions. You cannot solve that setting equal to 0. So there's no local maximum or minimum because the derivative cannot equal 0. Now let's find the second derivative. Check on concavity here. So that was the first derivative from the previous page. So the second derivative, negative 3 times negative 4 is 12. x plus 4 to the, and remember you subtract 1 from the exponent to so the power of negative 4. So there's our second derivative, 12 over x plus 4 to the fourth. And just like the first derivative can't equal 0 because there's uh, no x in the numerator, there's only x in the denominator, this cannot equal 0 either. So the second derivative cannot equal 0, so that's why there's no inflection points at all. Now, but uh, there is still concavity. Okay, Concavity can change across that vertical asymptote. Remember, we do have 1 at negative 4. And the, um, the second derivative, though, because the, the only place where there's an x is in the denominator, has a power of 4. And since that's an even power, the second derivative can never be negative. So it's always positive. So the graph is completely concave up. Remember, even though you don't have a point of inflection, concavity, there's still concavity, unless it's just a straight line. So let's graph, the, remember, the horizontal asymptote is at y equals 0. The vertical asymptote was at uh, x equals negative 4. And I'm going to plot a few points here. Uh, I'm just actually using um, the like negative 2 and uh, negative 6. I'm putting them back in the original function. Just to plot a few points to draw the graph a little more accurately. So I'm just actually substituting uh, uh, negative 2, negative 3, negative 5, negative 6 back in the original function. And actually, because I know it goes up here, I want to graph them more accurately. So I also used um, uh, negative uh, 3.5, negative uh, 4.5, put in place of x in the original function. And so this is what the graph looks like. Remember, to the far left, it stays above the horizontal asymptote, and it goes up on the left side of the vertical. And the same thing here, it stays above the horizontal asymptote to that side, and it, and it goes up close to the vertical asymptote. So that's what our function looks like. 